I'm going to leave the chat quiet. Are you okay? Okay, great. So um, we um, we come here to today practice uh, somatic yoga and uh, welcome and just find a place on your mat or a comfortable sitting position. Yoga. Um, where to start with yoga? So just an introduction for our practice. So we've got something to connect for, connect to. As stress affects our system by increasing the heart rate, creating respiratory disturbances, stomach imbalances and sleep disturbances, we can find a tool in yoga. Yoga has been proven to balance respiratory imbalances, to reduce the heart rate, to lower the heart rate, and to reconnect us to our Circadian or circadian, I believe it's pronounced rhythm, so that our sleep is restored. Then, because of this, yoga has access to the system that relaxes us. And this system is something that we, in somatic yoga, play directly with. Whilst you're finding your position, you're comfortable on your mat, uh, check you have some water. I'm just going to give you a brief overview on how we, how we do this. So rather than warm up the body, get the blood flowing, or come into a particular posture, in this session, we engage with the muscles, the joints, and the specific movements that the body allows. There's a very famous poet who said that when we listen deeply to nature, We take on her her qualities, and one of those greatest qualities is patience. So, for this session, we're going to create and explore and you're not going to have so much instruction but more a little bit of direction and suggestion so feel um settled in the space that you're given to explore and to find things and that there's not really a right or a wrong it's just a simply an encouragement and an a an opening, an invitation from me and from yourself, your inner body, to engage and observe with what you're experiencing. Somatic yoga is an experience of the body where you directly come to an understanding and find your own power of knowledge through your 
own direct experience. You might want to have a pen and a paper nearby. And you may want to rewind this if you are watching this again. Or even take note of the places where you can watch again. Feel free to stop and watch as many times as you need to. Or even just to come into this point, the video, at a particular point where you'd like to practice and watch very carefully and then practice or copy. Or just simply use it as a guide. Start by bringing your feet uh, below your knees and come to the floor so that your back is aligned with the floor. Have your palms faced up. Close your eyes. Become aware of your feelings inside your body. Maybe you're hot, you're cold. And the sounds outside the room, the sounds inside the room. Let your attention be on how the earth is supporting you, how you're in contact with the floor. And let go. Notice how your body is softening into the weight of gravity. The breath expands and the breath contracts. It's a lovely expansion, just following. See if you can explore the way in which your breath is moving. It's very gently with your attention. And here you're just noticing any thoughts or any feelings. And with that, i just like to mention, you don't need to push any of those thoughts or feelings away. Throughout this practice, we are allowing all of those things to be there. Whatever comes up for you, see if you can breathe with those feelings, with those thoughts. And if any of those sensations become uncomfortable, simply notice that and if you can, just bring it back to breath. I like to go with uh, an anchor. And you can go with this if this helps you. I feel calm and soft. Settle into that space. So the chest doesn't move and the abdomen rises and falls. Can you be aware of the external world, your room, the walls, the sounds? Simultaneously, the inside. I've come into sitting, but you can remain lying down. Just in case you sat up. <laughs> and you're simply noticing the flowing breath. 
And as you're noticing that flowing breath, it's just an ability to be with that breath, however it's moving. If you can find the breath a little deeper in your abdomen. A little softer. Or if you can just be with the coarseness of the breath. And as much as you can, bring your attention to the warmth of the outbreath, the sensation of the nostrils. So there is a directive of temperature through the nostrils as you feel that warmth. You can connect to that and soften into the floor with that warmth. Wherever it's easier for you to send your attention, notice that and how it softens you. We're going to move the hips, so the rocking motion of the hips from this point, without taking the awareness away from the breath. And you can have a look here, just by contracting the muscles and drawing the pelvis forward, the pelvis lifts towards the heel and the arch of the back is created, then as the feet push back, contract the belly a little bit and push the arch into the floor so the back flattens. This is a, there's a, like a bowl, I like to call it a bit of a bowl here, that you tilt forward and tilt back. So the bowl is your pelvis. If you imagine you tilt the bowl and that curvature is your spine, the pushy motion is going to come from your chest and it's going to be pulled by, where is it pulled by? I don't know. Where you're just exploring this movement of rocking the pelvis back and forth very gently and breathing with that it might be very small and if the muscles start to contract a little bit if there's any resistance where might that movement need to go maybe a little smaller. I find if I make it a little smaller, it's sometimes easier to let that motion move. So we do two or three more here, letting the pelvis tilt forward. So the pelvic bone goes to the floor and on an out breath, the back flattens pushing the spine back into the floor and the pelvis almost lifts off the floor, the buttocks. Just see what happens there, you push with your feet. Finding this motion of rocking.
Can you do the movement without contraction? Can you just... Well, there is contraction there. There is a pushing and releasing. Rather to say, um, can you do this without resistance or tension? Just letting the movement be really soft and rolling. Just looking for your breath. Maybe that breath is quite soft, so you can use that. And then rest and relax. Let the legs just fall from one side to the other. And here notice if, where can I move the legs that feels really comfortable? So it might be that they don't go all the way down to the floor. Just notice if, there's a limit to where the legs go. The body is going to communicate to you in resistance or tension. Here I'm actually rocking the feet on their sides and feeling where the points of the muscles are telling me something different. Just noticing where those are. Then come to the center. So you know where those, those points are. We can come back to this in a moment. But first, uh, let's go come to sitting and explore from the sitting. So come to your left side and push up very gently. Ah, <sighs> take a nice sigh here. So the hands that we we know there's actually a distinct connection between the hands and the lungs. They're very similar. Uh, in connection points. We notice when uh, we actually get a gesture here in giving, in handshaking, this is a really important part of our communication. So when you take hold of your hand and that for this you're in a, in a sitting position that's really comfortable. So place a, a, yourself on a bolster or a block and sit cross-legged in an easy pose where you can sit for a little while and your back is long. Take hold of your wrist with your other hand. Shake the wrist. So take hold of the wrist firmly and you'll notice that that tension will increase the, the blood supply in the lower arm and you'll be able to soften and flap your hand. So you can play with this. How much freedom can you get? Can you let it just fall off? And it, it's so easy to do this with children because they love letting things hang and flop. So, you know, here is an opportunity for you to engage with, with that space inside yourself. That sound, that, you know, and if that helps you too, you can maybe make a noise. And the breath. This is the action, the feeling. You can change hands. That identifies with the water element of the body. So just try that. You can explore with the speed and also the sensitivity. Um, lightness. We, how do we find this lightness? We go a little bit smaller. But I'm, I'm actually taking the hand a little bit like uh, I would a child's hand or something really, really precious. And really holding on to it with the fullness of my attention. 
And if you can do that, you've actually got the weight of your hand in your other hand and then let go of it. And then if you can find, you put them both together. It's actually easy to, if you feel into, is it, is it easy? I don't know, but if you, if you feel into one hand and try and see if you can feel the sensation of ease on the other hand. I've got a mirror here that I'm looking at. I get engaged with that so I can have a look at how free my hands are and how one is moving more than the other. Is one moving freer than the other? Okay, so those wrists are now free. Let's just to press, place them on, on the knee, the inside of the knee joint. There's some sensations there. And we can we can feel now how or, or I can feel now how that blood is really flowing down into the hands. There's some sense sensations there of invigoration. I've got some tingling. Have you got any sensations in your hands or your arms now that you didn't have before? And take a deep breath and just let go of that. Lengthen your spine. Coming back to your breath. And you might, you might find, uh, because the weather, I've found that the weather's got quite cold, especially in the morning, that my blood flow has decreased, the circulation has decreased. So if you are one of those people like me where the sense circulation it has, has decreased, uh, this is a really good thing to do. We just kind of actually touch the foot and just give it a bit of a massage, just to um, enlighten, feel our attention on the foot, just to very gently press. This is all very soft and um, so comforting for the foot. And the foot, and then the other foot just pressing into the foot. Imagine that you've got uh, a bit of dough and you're trying to sort of knead into it a little bit. So this isn't a, a press or a hard push or anything or even tight. You've got this lovely softness in the hands. How can you send that towards the foot now? Is it? And I've just found actually this rubbing sensation. This is something we do with the hands to rub the eyes to really warm. We naturally have this incredible ability to find our own heat by rubbing, rubbing the skin. Just to warm everything up. Okay. And then, okay, we've got this lovely heat that we're connection to the top of the foot. Um, you take your foot, a fist into a little palm and the purpose of this is to bring blood flow to the to the lower parts of the foot. So we're going to use the weight of the hand and the arm, and in, and instead of actually um, punching or um, feeling any sense of emotion or, or raggedness, this is actually just letting the hand fall into the foot. Just naturally, you can rest the foot wherever you like on the floor and hold, hold the ankle just here above the joint. And sort of pat. Well, patting, patting it is, is a little too light. Pound the foot all over the sole of the foot and then place the foot down and look at both feet and you're observing um, the feelings and sensations 
between both feet. Then take the, the foot on the other side and pound, pound it. So you take the hand into a fist again and then press it, press. So it's, I'm using the weight of the arm and I can feel that the movement is going to come from, if you can, up actually the centre of the chest. But I can feel the weight of the humerus, this lovely big, ball and socket joint. Yeah? Good. Great. Once you've done that for two or three minutes, what we do? Two or three minutes is a bit long. Let, we'll just take it, take it for about 30 seconds. Put both feet down in front of you. Again. Knees below the, the shoulders. And you'll notice now, with this lovely square, the knees, hips, and the heels. There you are, feet flat. And it's just a little little um, distraction here for you, actually, is a um, bit of information to understand. These proprioceptors here, all the touch parts of the skin have been awoken by the pressing and movement, the vibration we've created on the outside. So how can you experience that in information now? we we'll do a couple more things here. Okay, take hold of the foot, give it a little wave. So imagine that your hands your foot is your hand, so you're actually blah, 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 saying hello with your hand, with your foot, like you would your hand. And then you're going to circle the foot. And if your hat, foot feels a bit cold, again, you can give it a, a bit of rub. I'm finding my, hat, my feet are, are going cold. So if you, if you find that, you can increase the rate of circling. Now what, what do you find here as you circle? We do five circles one way, four, five, and then rotate it the other way. Let's see if you can get the warmth of the rest of the body. Imagine that really like soft honey going around and around and around. Okay, and then pop that down. Go back to the point if the feet touch the floor aware of this the two feet together and pop that down and then we're going to give those other foot away how much can you let this leg free of the ankle there you go and five circles one way and then five the other okay i think i'm just going to check here to see if anybody all here everyone's okay good okay so i saw a camera go off there <laughs> that's good all right so you're here i'm just going to change that camera so that goes in front okay I can see, so I'm coming back onto my stool, homemade stool. Um, where, where was I? Okay, place the foot down. Have a look at the feet. What information have you got coming through here? So we have more information, the aliveness, the blood flow, the oxygen has come to this area of the foot. So can you feel that? 
so what we've done is circle the, f the feet, shake, shaken, shaken the feet, shaken each foot. Um, that word sounds wrong right now. I don't know why. Um, and we've also pounded. We've used the weight of the bones to connect from one joint, one ball and socket joint, to the other ball and socket joint. So there's an our relationship between the ankle joint and the shoulder joint, where I I can physically feel that I have a a softness and a warmth in my shoulders. And we do have this ability for reflecting one joint into the other joint. And just to let that um, be a nice sort of exploration, why don't we have a look at the, the legs? So take the legs out in front. Uh, there's this possibility of using the shaking sensation and that warmth to flow through all the way through just as if there is an exercise happening but there isn't really so we're shaking the body and making the body think that it's exercising in a way so we're actually going to warm the joints so take your hands here and we're going to send that warmth maybe from the feet up to the hips can you let that come all the way up great side to side good so let them wave and release the feet how can you let the feet waggle and rock Rock the hips, rock the knees. And your hands, I'm gonna say this now. So have you got your hands pushed into the floor and the shoulders drop down, drawing down, contracted towards the floor, leaning back into the hands, so the weight is in the hands. You can have a play with which motions can they go forward and back, maybe side to side. So here is a sensation of water. We're engaging again with the fluidity of the body. Can you make it bigger? backwards and forwards. Backwards and forwards. Oh, and rest. And here we just have a rest in the sensations that you feel after moving. Bring your attention to your breath. So I can feel quite a lot of warmth here. What can you feel that you can really engage with? Any sensation? Or maybe you don't want to engage too much with it. It's an uncomfortable feeling, if it is at any point. Maybe you can sit with it. You can go on a little bit longer. It might be that there was a bit of a click there. Just play with that for a few more minutes. And then we're gonna to move to this point where we're gonna engage with this shape of horizontal. So we've done a vertical and now we're going to the horizontal plane. So once you've had a little explore with that shaking forward and back,
bring your hands so that they are directly, I've got a rug out here directly below your shoulders. And I'm using a rug here, which will just help me feel soft with the floor. So we have these, um, these engagements with sensations of touch. So softness on the floor and materials, um, hardness. Um, there's a relationship between material if you find you have an aversion or a sense of resistance towards a particular area or surface you can change it up for something so that's what i've done here so place your hands underneath your shoulders and a little bit maybe a hand away draw the shoulders down back and down and pushing into the hands and then just find this lightness with the legs let them fall. How can you let them fall from one side to the other? Great. Okay, two or three more. And they need to push now into the feet to get a little bit of resistance. So you can feel that lovely square. I'm just exploring. Come to the center. Just in, I just thought of that, to push into the feet and then let the legs go down. What does that do? So continue with that for a few more. What information are you finding? It's very lightly dropping. And a little push into the feet so that the legs are drawn right the way back up. And you might be able to feel that there is a relationship between the shoulder joints and the hip joints. I've got a sense of this square. You might want to encourage the head to move as well. The opposite side. Two, three of those. And then take your elbows flat. Lower your knees to one side and draw a circle with your fingertip, your shoulder going all the way round, all the way down. And as you inhale, the arm comes up. And really softly, this is just soft and light. Breathing with the circle. Inhale. Play with how much softness from the hip joints dropping that you can send into the hand. And then rest in that position for a breath or two. One more breath. Push into the soles of the feet. Watch the knees come up and then very gently come back down. Do you need to move on your mat here? Drawing from the space here all the way up the circle with your fingertip and all the way around and down. This is very slow and very calm and soft. Inhaling up. 
following it with your head. You can keep the head still if you want to and just notice what that does to the movement. How does that make you feel here? You let the head go with it. Can you also let the chest go with it? And let that move deeper on. So you may let the chest get involved, really rolling it out. And just two more breaths here. And then we'll sit. Following the line of the circle from the fingertips. Soft and gentle. There you go. And bring the knees back to the center. This movement we just try now is rocking backwards and forwards with speed on your feet. So it's like a little push. You can practice this on your own time. It's pushing and releasing. It feels like, for me, a sliding on the skin. And this is easier when the body's really soft in the joints. So you're connecting to the communication we just enriched with rolling the shoulder joint. The weight of the whole body is being carried by the floor and you're just sliding. And rock your pelvis forward and place all the weight in the feet, pushing the knees forward. Notice the weight in the feet and the knees. You're hanging the pelvis. Lowering the pelvis down to the floor. Inhaling, drawing the pelvis up. Pushing into the feet. Let's say that you're pushing into the feet, allows the pelvis to hang from the knee joints. Then you might find something moves, something wants to untuck. So listen in to the body. We'll let your awareness scan the body, hang the pelvis from the knee joints, and as you exhale. Let the weight slowly travel back, very gently into the spine. And the spine rolls down to the floor. And let's here just notice the weight of the body being held by the floor. Has anything changed? Roll onto your right side, push up into sitting. Okay, coming from sitting into the um, hands and feet underneath your knees and underneath your shoulders in a cat position. So I have all this lovely softness. Now what happens if we experience the weight of the body and this will be the weight of the upper body. So all you're gonna do is shift your body forward. Notice the weight in the hands and then gently move back. See how that is for you. Experience it as pressure. See if you can move the weight into the fingertips and the front of the hand. And then slowly and gently draw the pelvis back and push from the hands into sitting onto your heels. 
in a swan position. Move your weight forward and we'll do this three or four times. Weight goes over the hands. Feel the weight. Press and then push back. Weight goes over the hands and then push back. I want some more. Sensing the weight, you're sensing how you feel here. The pressure in the hands, pressure in the forehands, and maybe exhale. Push back from the hand. Then what's happening in the hands as you're here? The contraction allows the blood flow to increase. You simply notice the change. And moving forward. Come up into standing, however feels comfortable for you. If the hands are shake out. And let the blood flow recover or go into places where it is not used to going. Let any tension go. Good. Okay, what happens if we just go with lifting the legs? So I call this monkey pose and I work with the children in lifting the legs. And what this is, is just crossing the body the left over the right. This practice uh, we use to stimulate circulation, but also to balance the hemispheres. And in this practice, what we're gonna do is just explore the hip movement joint. So we have this connection to the hands. We've got this contraction. You can feel that arms are warm. Now the tendency here is for the legs to go, try to go up. So I'll show you the posture moving. Let's just move this here. So the arms can come out and they imagine that you're placing them on the shelf. So they come up the medial line of the body. So there's this relationship between the, the center of the body and the outside of the body. You rest your hands, your arms on the shelf and the legs just, they just get put down. So the legs will naturally go up and you put them down. They're free, they're open. And rather than lifting them using the tension of the leg, they're actually being placed on the floor. So it's an effortless and easy and open space just to lift and feel the hips hanging from the hip joint. So how can you hang your legs? And my relationship to them is that I might be so used to feeling them go really high, in which case, you're breathing them, breathing with them at the same time. You have a conscious effort to go, I don't need to lift the legs very high. See if you can let that go. Just see if you can let that go. 
instead of creating a bit of effort. Let's circle the hips so that we you find if you're circling the hips, this is going to allow you to maintain that relationship of circular motion, which is the origin of the hip joints, which is great. And also this reminds us of our sexual centre, which is the place where we stimulate a lot of our energy, creative forces. So you can imagine you're creating a circle on the floor with your pubic bone inside your legs. Two or three one way and two or three the other way. Keep the feet pressed into the floor so that you have a sense of groundedness with the legs. And explore, we have this lovely relationship between the length of the body moving forward and the width of the body. So now you know what the practice is, the inhale, you have this horizontal plane of the body, the width that you're gonna step into and if you want to, the, the head can be, get involved, but otherwise you rest your eyes, just le le letting them focus center ahead of you. I would say a small dot, and then you keep that in line with your ability to balance, which is, rather than lifting the legs, drawing up out of the body, or you're actually drawing down. So in like that, why don't we just see you know, what this space, you just have a little explore up here. This is coming out of the body, you know, the ability to kind of lift up because we can jump into space. And also just pulling down, we've got this diaphragm here. You've got this center, the vocal diaphragm. Also pushing down into this squat, this, the feet and the legs contact with gravity, pushing down. So it's the ability to draw down. And then we've done this width. We feel the width of the body. And actually, this is also this ability to smile. Everything goes wide. Yeah. And you can smile as you're doing this really wide. Everything's wide and horizontal. And then the very vertical plane of the body, the legs can go up. This lovely motion of just touching ahead you don't have to touch the foot necessarily but this movement you win the arms here just have a look face windmill forward and the legs lift up crossing over breathing so you have that vertical plane and stop and rest You're just indulging in these different areas of exploring the vertical plane. And then the horizontal. Crossing the contours of the body over this medial line. So it's easier. Now you can explore the coming up out of the body, actually centre down, drop the feet into the floor just in putting the foot down you might be able to link the breath the out breath the contraction of the life app help you to put the foot down so everything is actually stabilizing and drawing you down so practice that for a little while explore how it's really making you come down into the ground drawing down not lifting up and then this becomes a process of not trying to balance but actually using this ability to go down into the we can go up, rise up, and we can go down. And 
your arms can always rest on this area here if you have any issues with your shoulder. But just the, the arms are here to give you this sense of width. You can really expand out into the length of space that you have over the side of you. This might be even more difficult if your walls are coming in towards you and you don't have a huge space here. But you can use them to push off of. So inside of them, just let that be like a contraction. So we use the, rather than the reaching out, the pushing out to relax the hips, you could, and just let the feet come down, and then rest, bring your feet under the hips. So I think we've gone into all I want to do today. I've felt like we've stretched all these muscles here, here smiling, and you can explore that, that width of the muscles that draw the side in the head, and take a lovely deep sigh. And also that drawing down. And just to finish, we're going to ignore this vertical plane again. Just rising up, in breath. And out breath. And breathing out through the nose, what happens then? Just going up through the center line, drawing through this medial line. Go up onto your toes and exhale. Up onto your toes and exhale. I'm just going to turn this way so you can see as well. So we'll do this together for about two or three minutes. See if you can find the solidity from the floor, this touch, sensitivity, the weight that's drawing down. Also this ability to rise up, to let your weight go, go up into the sky. Your feet just respond without trying to make anything happen. So follow your breath. I invite you to really see and hear your breath. Do you have to use the tippy toes to come up and out of your body? How does it feel just to be center? Watching the breath. Resting in the warmth of your own body. Following the center line as if it's part of your heart space and extension. Go rising up out of it. So you're maintaining the connection outside of the heart space. And following the sensation of soft, slow breathing.
And it might be that you can rest in the solidity of the floor, ability to go down. Go down into the earth. Does it give you an ability to rise up a bit further? As you let your breath come to stillness, your hands come to the center and you just rest in prayer. You're resting here to see, to observe, just to be with whatever is happening. And then, yeah, I'd like to come into a sitting posture, rub your legs. Ground. Thank you, body. Thank you. Thank you, legs. Just rub that lovely touch, which we all need right now. Just connecting in that communication with your body. You know, I'm here. It's okay. And which I feel that too. You know, I need that. And your arms here. Thank you, arms. Rub there all around the chest. This lovely heat, how can we really engage with that heart center here? Yeah. And hands, palms rub together, place them over your open eyes. Let that energy flow in. Breathe out and let that energy of light, love, and peace remain within you. Bring your hands into prayer. I'm so appreciative for you joining me today, or if you're on the recording, and this has been great for me, so I'm really happy to have you there on the other side, the other end, wherever you are, at whatever time, uh, come and join me, and come and join me for some more classes. The pay link is on the email. Uh, it'd be great to have more of you here. I know that people want one to once, so it would be great to do that too. And uh, just see if you can engage with any of this stuff in your practice and do feedback to me how you get on. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, these are hard times for us all, so stay strong and really uh, look after yourselves. Okay.